This week's episode of ReZero probably had the most unpredictable narrative flow that I can recall between both of these seasons. Watching this episode, it was impossible to predict if we could trust this character because, you know, generally with a reset, we take our experience and we learn from it and we adapt with it. And since Subaru is in a lot better of a mental state than he generally was in Season 1, it seemed like he'd have a pretty easy job of taking things that he learned about from his last point of view, his last reset, and then he could adapt and do things a lot more quickly. But very noticeably, we saw that everything that he was trying to do just kept pissing off Garf or Amelia, and it just felt like we didn't know what to see or how to react, and then we would see Frederica, and I was like, I guess she's the most trustworthy of them all. It's like, where do you go from here? And the fact that I didn't know, and I felt like at every moment, anything that we see could kill him, because even though it seemed like he had a lot of people on his side before he died, it almost feels like he's losing more and more, and the fact that the end of the episode with Beatrice saving him before he can die, potentially giving him a save point which could destroy his mind even more, is definitely frightening, and I love that about this series. Though the first thing I definitely want to dive into is Ram herself, because she was given a very prominent role in this episode, and actually did something that was very... something I just wasn't seeing coming in any way, shape, and form, and that's her slightly remembering something that happened with the Rem, where she was tossed to the side, in order to be a distraction, in order to save Rem's life. And I love that she doesn't know why she was so hurt by Subaru's comments about tossing her aside. I thought they were going to go the more kind of cliche, like, romantic route as she was embarrassed because she actually has feelings. But rather, no, they were giving a realistic reason for that conversation to happen. And that's why Subaru brings up Rem and just kind of drops the entire information on her. And that's what I love, is that you don't really know what could happen and what a character might say, because even though we have a pretty good understanding of what Subaru should do in this point of view, his reset, things like that, uh, seemingly everything that we probably were assuming just went out the window. Something that got brought up last week a lot in comment sections, my included and read and things like that, is that a lot of what Subaru is doing for Amelia is very similar to what Roswell was doing himself, where he's putting Amelia in danger because it will better her candidacy in order to be able to take the throne. And some people were pointing out that Subaru not taking the trial himself and forcing Amelia to is basically doing the same thing, just with a different code of words. So the fact that he brought up the fact that, hey, I passed my trial, you are very afraid of yours, I will do it. I was actually really admiring his character there. I thought it was a great step forward that he was taking ownership that he could handle the trials and she wouldn't have to put herself in danger. But we saw a night and day performance from Amelia, where even though she was scared and you know, was a little disappointed that Subaru was forcing her to take it before he died, there was love and compassion behind her words, where with this, she felt betrayed and stabbed in the back as if she was inadequate, as if she couldn't take it herself, and she was actually deeply disappointed in Subaru for even suggesting that, and the entire crew was just, it seems like things have to go the way they did before in order for everyone to stay okay, but if we go that direction, then Ram and Rem and just everyone else could end up dead and it's like what do you do and I have no answer especially considering they didn't go where I thought they would. Another death and we would do the thing that we kind of saw in season one a lot of. You try, you fail, you reset. You try, you fail, you reset. That's traditionally what season one did but this time they locked him in a room in the library with Beatrice and I'm like can you just kill the man? It's weird to say that you know just saying like can we just let Subaru suffer because that would at the very least allow for him to try again, but if that reached a save point, which I honestly feel like is a 50% possibility, that's going to be something. I don't think Rem is dead, I don't think Ram is dead, but at the end of the day, you know, Petra, Frederick, that's a possibility, and if they hit a save point, Garf is going to be pissed. I don't know where they want to go with this, and this is fantastic. I think Subaru's performance really got across how he's matured and developed, but also shows how terrified he is. You start the episode off with one of the most sunken and fearful faces, We've seen in quite some time, but still keeping his character that season two has established alive and well, that he understands he has to care for Amelia. He has to use his experiences from before and rely on others. That's exactly what he did. And I honestly don't think he did anything all that wrong because based on what we saw last week, this seems like the most logical and most mature route to go down. But we see it was actually the worst pieces of dialogue that he could throw these characters ways and cause for even more people to not really trust in him. And if it wasn't for Ram coming along, I mean, we would have had a reset a lot sooner. It's quite interesting that someone is hiring Elsa, though, to basically take them out and how them coming early basically goes against the information. I'm very curious if it was someone inside the sanctuary that is hiring them, if it's, you know, it could be Roswell and so I don't know. 
there's a lot we don't know because really, if this episode showed us anything, it's that everything that we think we know about the formula of ReZero has been tossed out the window, and that this author and this studio clearly has a lot of tricks up its sleeve, and just the beautiful directing, it's horrifying directing, but the beautiful directing at the end of the episode where you can't tell what's going on, it feels as if we are Subaru. Which is honestly one of the anime's biggest traits, is that from voice acting, to just the panting of breath or feeling like he has his arm cut off, there's all these little subtle cues that makes it feel like we go inside his point of view, and the fact that it's blurry, it's disoriented, we can tell we're riding and then we get tossed through a window, we can't tell what we're seeing and then we realize that everyone around us is dead. It is beautiful and brutal to see how much they went into this, and the fact that we are now 31 or so episodes into this anime and I don't know what Subaru should do, shows us that this doesn't have a linear formula, but rather, Every arc is going to do something different, and all you can say is hold on to your guts, because not only is there someone coming for everyone's guts, it's very unnerving to know that everything that you've learned up until this point, all the relationships that you formed, a simple change of words could completely shatter that, and it's not like these characters are coming from nowhere. Someone like Amelia wants to appear strong, she wants to be able to lean on Subaru, and Subaru can lean on her, and the way he delivered that, you think before he says it is the right thing to do, but realizing that it's actually some of the most painful words she could hear. Garf is someone who knows that he can't disobey Roswell, but of course, if Subaru doesn't bring it up, he wants to say, I wish you could do it, realizing that he can't, and the fact that he wasn't even going to get the necklace until he mentioned that, like, hey, you know, are you going to give me anything, and Ram's like, you know, are you going to give me anything to me, of course Ram would get something, it's very interesting how unstable his relationships actually are in Sanctuary, and that's both amazing and frightening all wrapped up into one. It's actually interesting, this was one of the most memorable ReZero episodes, and it didn't even have too much insane action. It did have some, don't get me wrong, and I think it's some of the most memorable directing in terms of brutality that ReZero has seen, but it's the fact that we think Subaru's matured, he's developed, he has relationships, have actually survived resets and save points. He can readjust his dialogue and be able to tackle this, do the two remaining trials, but then realizing that the way he brought it up, it actually, even though we thought maybe beforehand was the right way to go about it, is actually, it seems like he's crazy, or if maybe they can't trust him, and I don't know what he should do, I don't know what's going to happen in that library, I don't know where we should go, but the fact that every time he sees someone alive and he just almost wants to break down in tears of joy, rather than coming off as a cliche scene, you really tell that this man is so worried, and the fact that he can't say, I return by death, face a cold hand on his heart, threatening to stop it, it's terrifying, but hopefully he'll be able to get through this, but I mean, if they kill Petra and her, uh, can you imagine that? That would be, it would be great for the narrative, but it would be horrifying for his mental state and many characters' mental states. I don't know, hopefully Beatrice will cut off his head after saying something and then maybe he can reset to that point, maybe that's a possibility. It's hard to say, all I know is that once again ReZero proves that it's, its best episodes are ones that we haven't seen yet, as this in my opinion is one of my favorites for sure. Not like Rem's confession level, but it's definitely up there in the top 5 for sure. ReZero is a show that I just think, I can only imagine what this could look like if we got to up to like a season 5, because this is a show that you don't want to see only get like 50 episodes, you want to see it get 100 if not more, and some people may look at it being like, why would you want an isekai like series? to last so many episodes, but ReZero is a step above most anime that you can watch, and honestly, each season just cements itself further and further of a show that needs to be fully adapted. Even though the author is saying like it's going to be a ridiculously long series, at the end of the day, make this a ridiculously long anime, cut down where you need to, speed up where you need to, add in where you need to, because this is a show that, honestly, even though it may be a fool's dream, if it got like 300 episodes and it could keep new interesting ideas coming its way and finding new ways to refresh the formula, I wouldn't be complaining. Maybe that's insane to some and others are like, I could go for 500 episodes. All I know is that as long as they keep making ReZero, I think I'm going to absolutely love it more and more, and I could only imagine if we did get up to like a season 5 and each season was getting progressively better, or at least remained at the quality we're seeing, and I could look back at season 1 and be like, that's just good for ReZero standards, which is insane to say because many of us thought ReZero Season 1 was a masterpiece. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below your favorite moment and where do you think it might go next week? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to show your support and remember to hit that subscribe button if you have a new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.